my pleasure now to present our award to uh, the Doctors Without Borders. In my days as National Security Advisor, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and as Secretary of State over all those years, I have watched with utmost admi admiration uh, this program. They do work around the world that is not sufficiently heralded. They take risks. They can always be found at a point of the spear, as we say in the military, where the danger is and where the need is the greatest. And that was demonstrated again today with the loss of a life in the Central African Republic, and we share the grief that you and your colleagues feel. And so it's a great pleasure for me to have this opportunity to give you this recognition. For the last 45 years, Doctors Without Borders, or MSF, in its French initials, has gone where few others go to save lives and selflessly serve humanity. Founded in 1971 by French doctors and journalists who had witnessed armed conflict in Nigeria and natural disasters in what is now Bangladesh, MSF works around the world with neutrality, with impartiality, with the highest standards of medical ethics to advance the universal right to humanitarian assistance. And I've seen this over the years, and what I've said to my colleague earlier in the evening, there's no bragging, there's no shouting, there's no screaming, there's no wanting credit. All they want to do is serve, and that's what I think makes this organization so great. Doctors Without Borders provides emergency assistance to populations in distress, irrespective of race, religion, creed, or political convictions. The organization's groundbreaking work was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1999 with the proceeds dedicated to establish a fund to fight neglected diseases. Today, thousands of health professionals, logistical and administrative staff, most of whom are hired locally, work on programs in approximately 70 countries providing medical, psychological, and social assistance. In 2014 alone, more than 380 projects reached millions of people around the world. When there are outbreaks of cholera and measles, meningitis and malaria, MSF rushes in to treat the stricken and prevent the spread of disease. When the millions living with HIV, AIDS, and tuberculosis need treatment, MSF is there. When West Africa in 2014, they were the ones who sounded the alarm and swiftly developed and deployed thousands of programs and volunteers to deal with the problem of Ebola. In its fight against the disease that cruelly infected the very same people providing assistance, MSF, in the conduct of its mission, tragically lost 13 of its medical workers. Last year, 75 hospitals managed or supported by Doctors Without Borders were bombed in attacks that destroyed our badly, badly wound, wounded and damaged people and facilities. And regrettably, one of those had an American connection to it, which I was deeply sorry about and regretted and expressed our sympathy again to the folks who lost their lives. Earlier this month, the United Nations Security Council unanimously adopted a resolution supported by MSF, reaffirming the long-held conviction that medical facilities and health workers in conflict areas are neutral parties and must be protected. As the number of people forced to flee their homes reached unprecedented levels in 2015, and thousands of migrants' lives were believed lost in the Mediterranean Sea, MSF deployed its first operations to search for the boats in distress. The effort was complemented by medical operations on shore for refugees, asylum seekers, and migrants needing emergency assistance. MSF used hard data and first-hand accounts to place a spotlight on the immediate effect of government policies. MSF's work is not limited to the front lines. A leader in its field, MSF has reconfigured the practice of medical aid, most recently utilizing 3D printing and virtual reality to improve field hospitals. Doctors Without Borders regularly exposes human rights violations, detects looming health and humanitarian crises, and advocates for policies that secure access to affordable medicines and preventive measures such as vaccination. The organization has served as a moral compass in its field, working to improve humanitarian processes and ensure that they be accountable to those in need. And now I would like to 
call to the stage and present the award to Dean Marshbean, President of Doctors Without Borders here in the United States. For its extraordinary courage and dedication to healing our world's wounds with courage, impartiality, and neutrality, thereby furthering Dwight Eisenhower's vision of a world where cooperation replaces confrontation and understanding erases ignorance, I am proud to confer upon Doctors Without Borders the 2016 Dwight D. Eisenhower Medal for Distinguished Leadership and Service. Accepting for Doctors Without Borders, I present to you Dr. Dean Marshbean. And please express our thanks and congratulations to everyone who is out there today, all your volunteers, all your professionals. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for this generous introduction and for inviting me to speak. I come here, however, less interested in your praise and more eager for your help. The humanitarian community is facing a crisis, an erosion of medical humanitarian space that we cannot reclaim without strong support from governments, military, and civil society. President Eisenhower said, when you put on the uniform, there are certain inhibitions that you accept. His respect for a military code of conduct and the rule of law has been conspicuously missing in what can only be described as an epidemic of attacks on hospitals and healthcare providers. In 2015, there were 106 attacks on MSF hospitals, including the bombing of our trauma center hospital in Kunduz, Afghanistan, sadly, by the U.S. military. Hospitals and clinics in Yemen, Ukraine, South Sudan, Central African Republic, and Syria were also destroyed, killing patients, staff, and denying health care to hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of people. And the assaults continue, most recently with the bombing of the hospital in Aleppo, Syria. At least 50 people were killed in this latest brutal assault on Assyrian health facilities, including one of the last remaining pediatricians in that town. Repeated attacks on health care suggest a malicious and a deliberate effort to inflict maximal pain, to make life intolerable for communities, and to destroy all access to health care. Patients and doctors are being punished for seeking and providing health care. Bombing medical facilities appears to have become the new normal in times of war. The perverse is somehow normalized. Yes, even war has rules. At the UN Security Council earlier this month, MSF denounced such attacks. And it's past time that these attacks stop. The Russians deny responsibility, and the Syrians are mum. The Saudis have tried to justify the bombing of hospitals, and the world wrings its collective hands, but does nothing to demand accountability. The US condemns these acts, but I believe that our government missed an opportunity to lead by example when they refused an independent investigation after the Kunduz bombing. Why should the Syrians, Russians, Saudis, or the South Sudanese authorize an independent inquiry if the US, the putative leader and avowed, with an avowed respect for international humanitarian law, refuses? The perpetrators of attacks on patients and doctors cannot also be the investigators, judges, and juries. Until there is full accountability, until there is a political cost, as long as a mistake collateral damage, or the fog of war is an acceptable excuse, I fear we won't see a change. In one town in Syria, the community refused the reopening of the hospital, fearing that it would make the town a target for bombing. When there are no health facilities, mothers die in childbirth, and children die of preventable diseases. This is where we are today. Communities in conflict zones are faced with an impossible choice because health care has become a death sentence. I agree with President Eisenhower's sentiments 
when he said, war is mankind's most tragic and stupid folly. As a medical humanitarian aid worker, I've seen the results, and I know that no individual or single organization such as MSF can mitigate the suffering without strong support and outspoken support demanding that everyone obeys the rules of war. Because even something as abhorrent as war has rules, and they must be followed. Thank you.